I'm absolutely delighted that Martin can join us now. I'm sure he is extremely sleep deprived uh, <laughs> because uh, the East Hertfordshire count has been going on for a long old time. Uh, I think you started about 10 o'clock last night and finished about three o'clock this afternoon. Uh, so I won't keep you too long, but uh, let's firstly, just how are you feeling, Martin? Uh, I mean, it's just an amazing feeling. It's it's just amazing. I mean, yes, we're all exhausted, but I mean, the 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 adrenaline rush from this is keeping us going. It's um, you know going into this, we thought um, uh, that we could be the largest opposition party to a Tory administration, and we just we did not predict the collapse of the Tory vote. In the way that it has and across the 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 part of the district where we picked up our seats around where hartford buntingford we were out polling the tories in seats they had always held by a margin of two to one and three to one it, it's it's been incredible um so so what's so talk talk us through what's gone on there then so east hertfordshire i'm right in thinking eight years ago there wasn't a single non-Tory councillor on the council. In 2019, the Greens gained two seats. Now you're the largest party. Tell, talk us through that journey. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it's an amazing journey. In, in 2019, we, we gained two seats. Both of those were um, paper candidates who didn't expect to get elected. Um, we were benefiting from discontent generally with the Conservative Party nationally, from East Hearts Council itself, where the Conservatives have been in control um, for most of its 50 years. Um, in particular, there are issues around my hometown where, where the, um, the district master plan allows for a 20% increase in the size of the town built on what was Greenbelt until the Tories move the green belt in hartford it's um a big quarry um and uh that that was defeated and now housing uh, again um there, there there have been all kinds of um smaller local issues and i think the other thing is that the conservatives locally have just been hollowed out you know they've taken for granted that this was an area they would always control um, and they didn't put the work in, they didn't put the effort in. Um, the, the council was run by its executive, which um, didn't allow councillors from around the district to have a say from their, from their towns up to the top, um, and, and people have just reacted to that. It's, um, we, should, we have, I should say, had amazing support from the party nationally you know we we've had um you know adrian van ramsey visited us a couple of weeks ago natalie bennett has, has been visited a couple of times um we've had all kinds of support um to build up um a a leafleting and door knocking campaign which you know, four years ago, we were incapable of doing. We didn't have the members, we didn't have the money. And now our party structure is really robust. Um, and people have, I think, also reacted to the fact that we are seen to work hard on the council and to be extremely responsive to very local, um, very local uh, concerns. So that, that's really where this has all come from. And so you're now the largest party on the council. I know it's very much early days. You haven't slept yet. Um, <laughs> but does that mean that you will now be, as the Green Party, running East Hertfordshire Council? Um, we have to look at this. Um, the, you know, the Lib Dems are there with um, 10 seats. It may be that we can um, form an administration with them. Um, but we have to exp explore all kinds of options. The last time this council slipped into no overall control for a very short period, um, there was a sort of local council version of a confidence and supply 
arrangement where every month the leaders of the part the leaders of the three parties as it was then not the greens got together and decided what the council could do in the coming month um that's quite an unstable way of running things i i'm not sure we'd like that um i think you know we we want to be in it for the four year long term and 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 building a good record of um, of work on the council so uh, we we have a party meeting on monday where we thought we were going to discuss how we can be an effective opposition <laughs> um, now we uh, have to discuss how best how best to run the council incidentally we also have to discuss how we're going to do that while running both Hartford and Ware Town Council, because we've taken absolute control of both of those. And so you may or may not be running the council as of next week, um, but what are the Green Party's priorities for the uh, council going forward? Um, absolutely. The, the first one is that big developments that the Tories have inserted into the district master plan are reviewed. Um, our district master plan itself is up for review next year, I believe. Um, and we want to see development which is sustainable, um, both in terms of house, housing quality, but also in terms of water usage um, that's well integrated into the towns that exist in the district rather than being um, car determined car user sprawl out from the towns. Um, they, those are major, major points. We have um, uh, issues with very poor air quality locally. So we need to look at um, what we can do to, to maybe some simple wins working with the county council to bring in 20 mile an hour speed limits in the towns to, to reduce emissions. Um, there are issues around um, uh, com community arts and um, drama centres in a couple of the towns in the district. Um, and then the thing um, which um, blights all local government with the Conservatives cutting back central grants, we're, we're, we're going to have to look at what we can do with a very, very, very tight budget. And so finally, before I let you run off and maybe get a nap uh, or, or go to whatever post-election party is happening. Um, so the East, East Hertfordshire, it's a it's a patch that um, many of our viewers won't be overly familiar with. But uh, I mean, it's it's not dissimilar from some other areas where the Greens have started to perform really, really well, um, which is essentially sort of semi-rural areas that uh, are sort of commutable distances to a major urban area, in this case, sort of London. Um, and so there are other places where similar results have come in, you know, Mid-Suffolk being the big one, which again has that kind of similar nature. What do you think the results in East Hertfordshire tell us about uh, the, the Green Party more broadly and its appeal to voters and the kind of national picture? I think, first of all, it shows that, yes, we, we can defeat the, t the Conservatives in semi-rural areas, as you say, but we have also fought off um, in parts of the district challenges from Lib Dems and Labour. Um, so we're, we're competing across the political spectrum when we work on very local issues and are seen to be responsive to um, you know, the needs of residents. So that, I, think, I think that's, that's the message um that, that i see it's it's listen to what your residents want um give it to them in a way which accords with the principles and policies of the green party and people react well to that thank you so much for joining me this evening martin i'll let you get on and enjoy the rest of your day and bask in your success and glory um thanks yeah. so much i'm, I'm gonna have a beer and listen to the rest of the show so